How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for Neuro Micro, step one, step two, before you start, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I give you a like, really appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram, element underscore medical, I'm HL, man, underscore medical, links down below. My Telegram links to the Telegram group and channel down below, and I start the clip. 51 year old woman, she has meningitis. So, photophobia, stiff neck, okay? Meningitis. Now, let's look at the CSF analysis. Past level, as I said, you got to know your basics, all right? So, Clearly, we have low glucose, high protein, high lymphocytes, and negative blood. So let's just flip to the answer choice here. Choice A, cryptococcus neoformans. Correct answer. So you need to know fungal meningitis is going to be, holy shit, low glucose, high protein, high lymphocytes. They can sometimes say increased opening pressure, but it's nonspecific, okay? I mean, <clears throat> it's just to my observation, they can throw that in there. Could they throw it in there for bacterial as an example? Yes, but I'm just letting you know that maybe about two thirds of fungal questions. They throw that in there, increased opening pressure, but this is what we're gonna have so far. Obviously, cryptococcus neoformans, uh, increased risk with uh, AIDS patients or chronically immunosuppressed, e.g. Uh, organ transplant recipients, non-immunosuppressants like azathioprine or cyclophosphamide. So cryptococcus neoformans, uh, latex agglutination is the most accurate test for the CSF analysis. You can also do India ink prep, which is going to be a black background with these white halos, which are the polysaccharide capsules that do not stain. They can also show you a, a red stain, which is known as mucocarmine stain. Okay, so cryptococcus neoformans meningitis. A narrow base budding, the ends go together. Okay, N neoformans, narrow base budding, unrelated blastomycosis, the Bs go together, broad base budding. So, cryptococcus neoformans meningitis, if they ask you how to treat it, you're going to choose amphotericin B as uh, the number one answer. Let's just flip to the other answer choice here. I'll tell you some high points. Choice B, echovirus, wrong fucking answer. This is going to be aseptic meningitis. Aseptic meningitis is just another way of saying viral meningitis. You're going to see normal glucose. You're going to see normal protein or ever so slightly elevated protein, high lymphocytes, blood will be negative. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, herpes simplex, wrong fucking answer. So first of all, HSV, one and two for that matter. Uh, neither causes meningitis, they cause encephalitis, holy shit. So encephalitis is just going to be confusion. Okay, so if they give you stiff neck photophobia, meningitis. If they give you just confusion, that's encephalitis. If you have a combination of all of it, meningoencephalitis. So herpes, I would say four out of five questions uh, for encephalitis, they're going to give you blood in the CSF. Okay, so some students think it's a traumatic tap or they think it's a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, so you need, it's not. You need to know herpes can cause temporal and sometimes frontal lobe hemorrhage. They can actually tell you in the STEM, and they like doing this on two CK questions in particular, they'll tell you non-contrast CT of the head is negative. They'll say it shows no abnormality. So even though there can be blood in the CSF and herpes causes temporal, sometimes frontal lobe hemorrhage, uh, the CT is often negative. So they can give you a negative CT, and then they can say that there are spikes uh, on, on EEG over the temporal region. I've seen them do that as well, okay? So herpes simplex, uh, I just want you to take home. You can get blood in the CSF in about four out of five questions. The CT is negative, but they can say there's spikes over the temporal region. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, now you're saying meningitis. this wrong fucking answer. So bacterial, that's going to be low glucose, high protein, high PMNs, polymorphonuclear cells, which is just neutrophils. So what you can remember, and this is, this is going to make it easier, okay? You're going to remember that bacterial and fungal are the same in that both are low glucose, high protein. It's just bacterial is high neutrophils, PMNs, fungal is high lymphocytes. And then you say, well, if those are the ones that are like the same, then viral, that's the odd one out where you have the normal findings. Okay. So nasty meningitis, one thing they love to differentiate from strep pneumo, also the wrong fucking answer, is that nasty meningitis, they like giving you close quarters, like military barracks, college dormitories. If they don't say that, they can give you a kid, for instance, who has a uh, non-blanching rash. Okay, they can show you just like what look like ecchymoses on the limbs, on the trunk. Okay, non-blanching rash you get with nasary meningitis. They can also give you waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. So they can say bilateral flank pain, low blood pressure. You say, well, how do you know that's just not 
uh, sepsis, right? Septic shock causing low blood pressure? Absolutely, it could be. But you need to know waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome is where you have bilateral hemorrhagic necrosis of the adrenal glands, and you're losing not just your aldosterone, but also your cortisol. You need cortisol to have alpha-1 expression on peripheral arterioles so that norepinephrine and epinephrine can bind and cause uh, constriction to maintain blood pressure. So you're going to give hydrocortisone in that case. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see? I was, and I, actually, I'll just mention real quick, you need to know terminal complement deficiency, deficiency of C5 through C9, is possibly the highest yield immunodeficiency on USMLA. Actually, I would just say it's the highest immunodeficiency on USMLA. And how do I know that? Because I've gone through all the NBME questions, I've organized them subject specific into folders, and I know which questions show up more than others. And I would say terminal complement deficiency. Uh, exceedingly high yield, so recurrent nasarial gonococcal as well as nas uh, as well as meningitis infections. Okay, so they can just say like brother had a history of meningococcus, or a patient has uh, recurrent gonococcus, and the answer could just be deficiency of C8 or C7. Sounds weird, but it's terminal complement deficiency. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice C strep pneuma, wrong fucking answer. So just common cause of meningitis, okay? But you're not gonna get the non-blanching rash. The non-blanching rash is nasal meningitis. You're not gonna get waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome, okay? An increased risk of strep pneumo infections in particular, patients who have asplenia, like sickle cell. So encapsulated organisms, you say, well, wouldn't that be increased risk of nasal meningitis as well? I agree with you, 100%, absolutely. But so strep pneumo, a haemophilus influenza type B, nasal meningitis, but USMLE, if they force you to choose which organism, patient with asplenia, uh, either via surgery or autosplectomy, like for micro, repeated microinfarcts and sickle cell, they choose. They force you to choose an organism. They want strep pneumo as what patient's most susceptible to in terms of sepsis. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content if you like my stuff. Appreciate your time. That's it.